everyone, welcome back to another episode of my end of the review of the new Death Watch Codex. As always, my name is Jay, it's been a couple days since my last one, sorry about that, kind of lost track of time. But it's all good, in this video I'll be going over the Elite section, maybe keep going and see how far I get before the next video. So, as I mentioned, cool first impressions, it's a really interesting codex, a couple interesting choices, everything's a little bit more expensive, but you can take models in squads of one and uh, up to squads of five for most of the things that you normally take minimum squads of five and go forth, so it's kind of cool. So for the elite section, we have the Terminators. Now the Terminators are expensive, 40 points each. They have, a, they have rather than the Asian Little Fear, they have Fearless, which is pretty sweet. So Terminators with Fearless is pretty cool. Obviously it's a standard Terminator for 40 points. You get uh, Weapon Skill, Blissical 4, Strength Toughness 4, 1 Wound, Initiative 4, 2 Attacks, Initiative 9, 2 up Save. Cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, so that's all good, and, uh, it's an interesting codex. It is an interesting codex so far. Uh, as I said, it's a bit expensive, but you do get Fearless and Mission Tactics, which is cool. You get to, you know, rear one hit certain squads, or certain uh, types, and it's just a model, a one model squad for 40 points. So you can have a bunch of individual squads, you know, running around the table, deep striking in, because they all get deep strike if you take that as a rule. And uh, you may include up to four additional Terminators for 40 points each. Uh, and then the standard things, like you can replace a Power Fist with a Power Weapon or a Chain Fist, and, or Lightning Claw, Storm Shield, all that stuff. So for 40 points, interesting choices, yes. Up next we have the two Dreadnoughts. Of course, the normal Dreadnought at 100 points. And the Venerable Dreadnought at 125. This is pretty standard stuff. You get a um, you know, normal Dreadnought. Weapon Silver Skill 4, Strength 6, Front Armor and Side Armor 12, Rear Armor 10, Initiative 4, 4 Attacks. Three hall points, multi malta power fist with built-in storm bolter, searchlight, smoke launchers, and you get mission tactics special rule, and all the standard stuff apply. The thing is, the big difference between these guys and the um, the dreadnoughts in the space marine codex is that you can't take multiple ones at a time, unfortunately, which is cool to uh, dark angels and vanilla marines. And then up next, of course, venerable dreadnought for next twenty five points. You get a venerable dreadnought, which is weapon skill skill five and venerable, which means you get to reroll. The, um, if somebody penetrates the Dreadnought, you can make the person reroll on the pen table one time, and they have to accept the second result. Good stuff. Up next, we have the Vanguard Veterans. Vanguard Veterans are 25 points each, so once again, a slightly on the expensive side, right? And, but they come in squads of one, so you can have these guys deep strike around the table, getting to where you need them. Interesting stuff. Uh, and you get, once again, up to four additional ones for 25 points each model. You get a standard Vanguard Veteran, which he is a jump infantry, weapon skill is 604, strength toughness 4, um, initiative, one, uh, sorry, one wound, initiative 4, two attacks, leadership 9, three up save. Bolt pistol, chain sword, frag grenades, crack grenades, special issue ammunition. So you get special issue ammunition, cool stuff. Visual no fear, mission tactics. However, you get heroic intervention, a unit that contains any models in this special ignore penalties for disordered charges and can reroll one or both dice when determining charge range. So very, very similar to the normal codex. And that's about it. And obviously you can upgrade them with various weapons like Grav Pistol, Inferno Pistol, Plasma Pistol, Power Fist, Thunder Hammer, Storm Shield, and uh, we're taking Melta Bombs. So good stuff there. And that's uh, so the Vanguard Veterans. And that's it. That's the Elite Slots. So the Elite Slots overall, cool. Right? They're, they're, what's really interesting is that you can take squads of one and, and kind of use them around the table and need be, especially in games that involve tactics, you know, and tactical objectives. Um, it's kind of unfortunate that they can't take multiple dreadnoughts in a squadron. I figured they would, but then again, it doesn't fit the, the theme, I guess, is that the elites and the singles, you know, it's the elite of the elite and they like to hunt, they like to hunt on their own, you know, they're the Xenos killers. So, interesting stuff. What do you guys think of the elite slot? So let's get to the fast attack slot because the fast attack slot has one of the new vehicles, and of course it contains all the normal drop pod stuff and you know all the normal dedicated vehicles. But uh, we'll go over that in a minute. So the very first choice for the fast attack slot are the bikers. Now, the bikers are just a standard. Once again, you get for thirty points, you get a standard biker on the expensive side. Weapon skill, blue skill 4, strength 4, toughness 5 because he's on bike. One wound, initiative 4, two attacks, leadership 9, three up save. Warrior, twin link bolter, close combat weapon, fray grenades, crack grenades, special issue ammunition. They shall no fear, mission tactics, skilled rider. So that's pretty nice. You get skilled rider, 
which means that they get a plus one to their jink save, so they're essentially jinking on three ups. Good stuff there. And split fire. You can include up to four additional bikers for 30 points each. One may replace his close combat weapon. Any model, sorry, can replace his close combat weapon with a power weapon. Any model can take melt bombs and can take a teleport home. A teleport homer for 10 points. Now this is a pretty good idea. Since everyone can potentially deep strike in your codex, it'd be nice to have a teleport homer to get your guys where they need to be. Now they don't have scout. That's the big thing. They don't have scout, so you can't use that in combination. Up next, we have the standard rhino. 35 points for a standard rhino. I'm not even going to go over it. It's just a rhino. Rhino's a rhino. 55 points, a razorback. And for 35 points, a drop pod. Standard stuff, these are the like staples of any Space Marine army for vehicles. But now we get to the cool one, the Corvus Black Star, the new flyer um, for the Death Watch. Now the Corvus Black Star is 180 points, which I think is pretty good cost. Ballistic Skill 4, Front Armor 12, Side Armor 12, Rear Armor 11. So that's a great already, because now you know it's not going to be glanced to death by bolters. Three hull points, it's a vehicle, flyer, hover, transport. And it's also combat rolls, attack flyer, pursuit three, agility two. Though those are for the uh, death from the skies. War gear, twin link assault cannon, which is a great standard weapon. A black star cluster launcher, which will go to 104. So black star cluster launcher and a four storm strike missiles. So first of all, the black star cluster launcher, which is unlike other bombs, a black star cluster launcher does not have the one use only and can be fired each turn. Awesome. There's two different versions, Frag Cluster, Strength 4, AP6, Bomb 1, Large Blast, good for taking out Orcs and Tyranids and, you know, little things that don't have a good armor save. Or Infernus Cluster, Strength 5, AP4, Bomb 1, Blast, ignores Cover. Once again, has very good uses. And what else does it have? Stormstrike Missiles, which are... Uh, 72 inch range, strength 8, AP 2, heavy 1, concussive 1 use only. Four of them. Good for killing stuff. Good stuff there. So that's already good. So already it has some killing power. 180 points. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, it's an assault vehicle. So you can assault right out of it, which is nice. Of course, obviously you can't still assault the turn you come in, but still it's an assault vehicle. Transfer capacity, 12 models. The course belly can carry jump, in jump infantry and bikes. Fire points, none. Access points, two access points. But this is where the fun part is. May replace Twin Link Assault Cannon with Twin Link Last Cannon for free. I'd recommend that. Pop some stuff. May replace all four Storm Strike Missiles with Twin Linked Black Star Rocket Launcher for 15 points. Now, the Black Star Rocket Launchers I thought was quite interesting. I think the first time I read it. But uh, let's go through this. The, Storm, the Black Star. Rocket Launcher has two vo two versions, Corvid Warhead, 30 inch range, strength 6, AP4, heavy D6, Skyfire, or Dracos Warhead, 30 inch range, strength 4, AP5, heavy 1, large blast, ignores cover. Good uses. Yeah, some good uses so far. You know, so that's pretty cool. Look at that. So, 180 points. I think it's a pretty cool vehicle. I don't usually use a lot of flyers. You could take the, um, you could take a locator beacon, a hurricane bolter, the infernum halo launcher, or an auspex array. You know, so great choices there. Now we're out about eight minutes. Let's keep going. So up next are the heavies, and I'm going to finish off with the rest of the um, the formations that we didn't cause. And I figured this will be the end of the video because it's not a very big codex, right? Plus most of them are pretty standard. So up next we have the Land Raiders. Now Land Raiders, a Land Raider is a Land Raider, unfortunately. So 240 points, you get a Land Raider Redeemer. Land Raider Redeemers have the Twin Linked Assault Cannon, two Flamestorm Cannons. You know, where they're Armor 14 around, four Hall Points. Yummy goodness and stuff. For 250 points, you get a Land Raider Crusader, which instead has a Twin Linked Assault Cannon, two Hurricane Bolters, Frag Assault Launchers, Searchlight, Smoke Launchers, Assault Vehicle Power the Machine Spirit, and, uh, of course, for 250 points, you get a Land Raider, which is just the standard Land Raider with a twin-linked heavy bolter, two twin-linked glass cannons, searchlight, smoke launchers. You know, good stuff there. So, yeah, those three are pretty standard. So, most, some of the things in this codex are pretty standard, like the Land Raiders and obviously the dedicated transports, but it's all cool. So, let's go to the remaining um, formations that I didn't go to in the previous ones. So, I went through all the kill teams. 
But what's interesting about this codex is also there's command teams. So the command teams are, um, for example, there's the Strategium command team formation, one watch captain or chaplain or librarian, one choice of the following list, one unit of veterans, Aquila kill team, Fuhrer kill team, Venator kill team, Dominus kill team, Malleus kill team, or Purgatus kill team. No restrictions. Special rules. Now here's where it gets fun. Fight to the last breath. If the Strategium Command Team is led by a Watch Captain, all non-vehicle units in this formation have fuel and pain six up. Special rule, as long as he has not removed his casualty. Helps keep them alive. Suffer not the alien to live. If a Strategium Command Team is led by a Chaplain, all non-vehicle models in this formation have the Furious Charge Special Rule, as long as he has not been removed as a casualty. Pure of Spirit, Strong of Soul. If the Strategium Command Squad is led by a Librarian, all non-vehicle models in this formation have the stubborn adamantium will special rules, as long as the, the, the has not been removed as a casualty. Note that other librarians in this formation, i.e. those included as part of any kill teams, do not confer the special rule, only the librarian that leads it. So, interesting stuff. So right there, you get to choose your leader, each different, and your, your groups get special rules. Interesting stuff. Up next we have the Watch Company. Of course, Death Watch, Watch Company. You get one Watch Captain. Four choices of any combination of fun. So one unit of veterans, Aquila kill team, Fuhrer kill team, Venator kill team, Dominaz kill team, Malleus kill team, or Progatus kill team. So four of them. And you get decapitation doctrine. Reroll all failed to wound rules and armor penetration rules for attacks made by non-vehicle models from this formation that target any enemy unit that includes a warlord, a psyker, or an independent character. Now, that's crazy. Because, now those who play 40k a lot, most squads contain an independent character, not an independent character, sorry. Um, but many squads contain either Warlord, a Psyche, or an independent character. If you're playing against Space Marines, if you're playing against Eldar, you know, so many armies will have a good amount of independent characters or Warlords or Psychers. So that's pretty cool. You know, and any squad that contains them, you get to reroll to wounds and arm armor penetration rules. Solid stuff there. And finally, we have the Corvus Dropship Wing. Now this is... Three Corvus Black Stars. Pretty standard. No restrictions. Special rules. Burning Skies Doctrine. When models from this formation target an enemy flyer or flying monster creature, with this attack, reroll any failed armor penetration rolls or to wound rolls. So good. Just helps them kill them. So pretty cool stuff there. And that's it. So those are my... That's my entire review of the new Death Watch Codex. And that was a three-part video, which was cool. Um... Obviously, I it was a small codex because it's just a, you know it's just a supplement basically not a codex it's it, it's not a supplement but it's a small codex and what I think about it it's very interesting I think it has really cool fluff I think people are gonna have fun playing it especially with the small squad sizes and you get the fact that you got to you know take guys from a bunch of different you know armies and put them together as space marines and the most elite of the elite um, will it be the most competitive I don't know it's gonna be fun and that's what matters people fun. Um, if it had, you know, Centurions, that'd be better, or the ability to take, you know, uh, Dreadnoughts and Squadrons, or maybe a Librarian Dreadnought would've been pretty cool. But, fluff-wise, makes pretty good sense. I like the new Flyer. I like the fact that you can take guys in Solos. That's pretty cool. I love the new HQ, and uh, Mission Tactics are pretty cool as well. Being able to reroll, you know, against, a, a reroll ones against a specific uh, type of the Uniforce Organization chart, especially when they're hitting on threes anyway, so the odds are they're gonna blow away whatever they wanna blow away. So what do you think of the new codex from the Death Watch, new Death Watch codex people? Leave comments in the comments section down below. And as always, this video is brought to you by my, all my Patreon subscribers. I really hope you enjoyed that. Please help support my Patreon campaign. Link in the description below if you want to go support it. Thank you to all you Patreon subscribers. It really mean a lot to all my free content. So thank you as always. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.